Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I'll be discussing about a recent amendment, rather, I should say, an infamous amendment brought by Finance Act 2020 with respect to the provisions of tax collection at source, or in other words, TCS. So here, first and foremost, I will try to elaborate more about the basic concept of TCS because many a times we uh, confuse the provisions of TCS with that of TDS. And believe me, even as CAs, we sometimes think that TCS is actually tax data corner. So we will uh, take a simple example to understand this concept. Suppose Mr. A sell goods to Mr. B for rupees 10,000. These goods are uh, liable to charge for TCS. Uh, for sake of simplicity, we assume that the rate of TCS here is 5%. Now, Mr. A will collect rupees 10,000 as a sale, sale consideration from Mr. B and the TCS amount of rupees 500, being 5% 5 of 10,000 from Mr. B. So now we understand that the ultimate owners to collect the tax amount lies upon the seller, unlike buyer in the case of TDS. The provisions of TCS are prescribed under section 206C of the Income Tax Act. These provisions existed earlier also, but they were restricted to certain categories of goods like motor vehicle, liquor, forest produce, etc. But now, with the amended provisions, the government has tried to extend its scope and tax net to almost everything because now the TCS will be applicable on all kinds of goods, irrespective of its nature. Precisely, the amendment has been brought with respect to three types of transactions. First, the TCS will be applicable on sale of national tour packages. Secondly, the foreign remittances through authorized dealers will also be covered under the scope of TCS, provided they exceed rupees 7 lakh in, during the whole financial year. The rate for both these transactions is 5%. And the provisions of these two transactions are also uh, amply clear and uh, do not require much understanding. Now coming to the third transaction, and it is very important because this provision has created a lot of hue and cry in the industry. As the government with this amendment has tried to extend its tax base to all the goods which were not covered under any other provision of this section, provided they satisfy certain criteria. So to elaborate further, the uh, provision of uh, the sale of goods will be applicable if and only if the sale consideration from sale of goods exceed rupees 50 lakh from a single buyer, either on an individual transaction or cumulative transactions during the whole financial year. And the turnover of the seller exceeds rupees 10 crore in the preceding financial year. Both these conditions are required to be satisfied to uh, apply TCS. These amended provisions are applicable from 1st October 2020. The rate for this third type of transaction is 0.1%. Now, since these provisions are being made applicable from the middle of the year, there were certain gray areas for which we required certain clarifications. And government has come up uh, with a circular on 29 September, uh, which we will discuss at the end of the session. Now, coming to the responsibilities and preparations required for the application of this section. As a buyer, what preparation are required to be made? First of all, the buyer should ensure that the PAN number is available with all the vendors to avoid any excess collection of tax. Like in case of non-availability of PAN, the TCS rate generally would be twice the rate prescribed under the respective clause or 5%, whichever is higher. But in the case of sale of goods exceeding rupees 50 lakh, which we just discussed about, this rate of 5% has been substituted with 1%. So in case 
the pan is not available and the sale consideration exceeds rupees 50 lakh there could be a possibility that thesis is collected at 1% secondly the buyer should ask the vendor to sign a declaration that the thesis amount collected will be duly deposited with the government and the transactions will be reflected in the quarterly thesis return and the thesis certificates will be issued thereupon thirdly the buyer should ask the vendor to show the tcs amount on the face of invoice itself to avoid any ambiguity as to what tcs will be charged or has been collected by the seller further the buyer should also persuade the vendor to issue separate invoices for sale of goods and sale of services because in case there is a single invoice of mixed nature, there could be a possibility that TDS and TCS are applied on a single invoice. And this could lead to cumbersome compliance. Although uh, the government has provided a provision that TCS can be awarded in case TDS is applicable on an invoice. Nonetheless, as a buyer, we cannot escape our responsibility uh, to deduct TDS even though TCS has been collected. Now coming to the uh, preparations required on the part of vendor. The vendor should first of all ascertain whether the turnover in the preceding financial year exceeds rupees 10 crore or not. If not, then it's okay. But if it does exceed, then he will have to identify the buyers with whom he, have, he has entered into transactions exceeding rupees 50 lakh. And on each penny exceeding rupees 50 lakh, he will have to collect tax from the buyer. Further, this tax collected will have to be deposited to the exchequer at each month end. Then the quarterly return has to be filed and the TCS certificates will have to be issued to the buyer. The uh, due dates of all uh, these formalities remain some are uh, more similar to that of TDS. Now, uh, to explain this whole concept in a more uh, manner, we will discuss about the accounting entries of uh, this TCS provision. For this, we have considered a sample invoice where office chairs are being sold uh, for rupees 1 crore. And we have not considered here the GST amount or any other tax uh, for simplicity's sake. The TCS here has been charged as 0.1% being 10,000 rupees. So in the books of vendor, uh, the entry would be simply bank account debit to sale account to TCS payable account with the respective amounts. The point of collection of uh, TCS is the uh, point only when the amount is actually received from the buyer neither before nor after and once this amount has been collected the seller will have the responsibility to get this amount deposited with the government at each month end for that he will have to knock off this liability account with bank account which which uh, simply could mean tcs payable account debit to bank account now coming to the entries in the books of buyer. The buyer would simply debit the purchase account. Now he will debit the PCS receivable account because it is an asset in his books. And will credit the uh, corresponding amount to the bank account. And once this credit is available in the TCS certificate at quarter end, he will uh, utilize this credit amount to pay off his income tax liability or any advance tax liability. For this, he can simply pass an entry income tax payable account debit to TCS receivable account. This is the whole concept and idea of TCS. Now coming to the uh, recent update provided by CBDT in this regard. The government is just not in the favor to uh, do the application of this provision. And just before we were actually uh, faced these rudderless provisions, it has come up with the clarification. And trust me, these provisions are totally in the favor of government. You will just see. It 
except for one or two provisions, they are absolutely in the favor of government. How? The TCS, although will not be applicable on the uh, transactions uh, incurred through stock exchanges. Secondly, the TCS will also not be applicable on uh, sale of patrol to non-resident airlines at airports in India. Now we come the uh, we come to the actual amendments and updates uh, provided by the CBDT. The TCS will be applicable on the sale considerations received after first October, even though the sale was affected before this date. Secondly, the sales affected prior to first October from first April will be considered to compute the threshold limit of rupees 50 lakhs. Thirdly, uh, the TCS will not, uh, like the sale consideration will not be reduced from the amount of sale return, discount, or any indirect tax like GST uh, applied on the bill of raised by the vendor. On sale of motor vehicles, they have provided a provision that in case this uh, tax is not liable to be charged under section 2061F, then it will be, uh, it will come under the provision of section 206C1H. Now, what does this mean? Section 206C1F provides that in case of sale of motor vehicle to any un end customer uh, for a value exceeding rupees 10 lakh, TCS would be applicable. But here, any B2B transactions were not covered. So why section 2061H, which is the new amended section, the B2B transaction will also come under the ambit of TCS, provided they satisfy the criteria of 50 lakhs. So this is the whole concept of TCS along with the amendments and uh, updates provided by the government. I hope this section, session was useful and uh, uh, in case of any query, please feel free to ask in the comment section. Thank you.